Hello, hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Zakaria the Ghost. Guys, as I continue with rivers, mountains, and caves, I know some of you guys, you have never seen my face when I speak about this series of rivers, mountains, and caves. I always put the picture and speak behind the picture and give you the message and paint the picture. And today I decided, you know, to give you, you know, some of the things that we usually used to do a lot when we were at Val River. I know some of you guys, you think maybe we were always seeing things eye to eye. There were times whereby we would disagree with so many things and there were times whereby there were also physical fights. So I want to share those stories with you guys, you know, in a way that you can understand exactly what I'm talking about. We were mostly praying at night, you know, a lot. We were praying a lot at night and we were sleeping during the day. You know, we will pray because of we understood that we were in danger. We understood that we were easy target for those who are doing, you know, the human trafficking, those who are always, you know, searching for people that they can find on the street and go and do whatever cruel things they wanted to do with them. And we knew that it was more difficult for people who are doing human trafficking to go door to door and snatch people because of now the neighbors can see or people can, can see them and identify them. But they knew that going to the river you know, it's, it's easy because it's at night, nobody can see them, and we were like, you know, vulnerable. I knew that, you know, and now, now, when people were showing up to that place early in the morning around 7, around 6, or around 8, and they find us sleeping there, they have this notion or this idea of, oh, these guys, they sleep a lot. These guys, what time are they praying if they're even sleeping by 6 o'clock? Yeah, when I wake up. You know, but you don't know that we were up the whole night, you know, praying. And now it was our time for us, you know, to rest the body for a bit before we wake up and go outside to the forest and go and collect the firewood. Because we had to collect the firewood during the day so that at night we can make fire that will keep us warm the whole night. And also, we didn't want to go to collect the firewood at night because of we were also scared of being beaten by snakes. So we wanted to go during the day where we can see where we were walking, you know. So, so much was happening. But now, others who were there with us, they started to have this kind of ideas of saying, you know what, we go out there and we collect the firewood and there are people who come here only at night and they want to cook, they want to warm themselves when they feel cold, and they don't go with us to collect the firewood. And we should start charging these people, you know, for being with us. You know, which looked like a smart idea, but there was consequences for that, you know. Because of now, once they started doing that, things started, you know, to be difficult at that place. Because of I understand the reasoning. People were saying, we are hungry here. We don't have food. We don't have anybody to give us money. We are not working. You know, because I remember others had friends who were working in the factories there at Frenaching. Who can give them the pilot? It's, it's pilots. Yeah, it seems like they're called pilots where you see the parking stuff there on top, those plants. And they take those plants and they put them there and they used to sell them. I remember... They used to charge like 18 rand, you know, or 20 bucks, you know, 20 rand for one pilot so that somebody who wants to come and join us, they must pay so that they can be given the access to sit next to us. Mm -hmm. and, and that made those who doesn't have money go to different places and not camp with us. And those who had money can come and buy the pilot and be with us and pray with us. But now they were there to buy the pilot and they were not even contributing spiritually. They were just there and they wanted answers. Because they come there with their problems, they have businesses, others they were taxi drivers, others were taxi owners. But now the problem is that they want answers and they don't get answers. Once they start buying the pilot and they start, you know, giving some other people stuff, and they expect to get the spiritual favor, the prophecies, so that they can know what to do with their business and why their businesses are collapsing. But the people who were charging people, you know, so that they can be there with us, they were not seeing things like the people who were running away from the place, the poor people. It became a problem. 
you know, it became a problem because these guys, they can see one or two things, but they were not deep in a way that they can give you answers. And that really bothered me a lot because I understood the power the place holds. How prophets used to come from Pretoria, from Soweto, Tembisa, from Everton, from, from Bluefontein, from, from Northwest, from Limpopo to come and pray with us and some prophesy us. So it was a problem for me and other people. And there were two guys who were actually making that, you know, thing to become difficult. And one day, those guys, they didn't see things eye to eye because they were drinking what we call calabar juice, what we call Taiwan. And now, they started having a problem when it comes to finance. You know, the other one sold the pilots, the other one decided to go and eat the money, and it was a problem, because now their business was like collapsing, you know. And I remember the arguments, and I was there with the guys. And I was like, guys, look, don't fight. You know, and the more I break off the fight is the more these guys want to fight. It was like I am putting petrol on fire. You know, it's like I'm invoking something in these guys. These guys don't want to fight. I did that the first time. Say, guys, stop fighting this and that. And I'm like, these guys, they don't know me. They don't know how irritated I am about their behavior. And if they want to keep on doing that, I'm going to leave them. You know, I went there the second time when they started there with guys, stop fighting, this is not nice. And I, I felt tension between them. I felt like, you know, they want to fight. Now they really want to fight. And if they go back again and I don't break off the fight, these guys are going to go to each other. And I was like, all right, I'm breaking them off. And if they want to fight again, I am not going to break off the fight. That's what I did. That's what I did. And sometimes you have to be tough if you are homeless and sometimes you have to take decisions that later you will sit back and you might regret but you are solving the problem so when i left them there and they wanted to fight the second time i acted like i want to go and break off the fight and when they hold each other i stood back and i was like i act like i don't see what's going on and here's the thing the older guy was slimish with a small body frame the younger guy, he was this 90s boy, you know, he's big, he's buff, and he's tall. So when they're going back and forth, the older guy is like saying, I'm not going to be disrespected by a young man. And the young man is like saying, I'm not going to be disrespected by this old guy. You know, and it became that thing that when they lock hands, I was like, okay. It's happening. These guys have been terrorizing us for months now or for days now. Let's see how far it goes. So, but something strange happened. The taller guy relied a lot on his muscles, on his body frame, and he thought he can win the fight easily. But he got it wrong because the shorter guy realized that, you know, the taller guy's head is just above his head and he understood that what can I do is to jump up and hit the guy on his chin and that was it the way the head connected with the guy the taller guy just lost consciousness he didn't know where he was and I can tell that he didn't want to be there because he never even had a chance to throw one punch all the muscles, all that weight worked against him because he lost his feet and it was so difficult for him to continue fighting because I saw the shorter guy start swinging the knee. It was one of those fights whereby it was brutal. I watched it and they thought I'm going to break off the fight because on the other side, we were with this other guy who was struggling a lot when he was sleeping because he was grinding his teeth i don't know i don't know if there is a term for people like that when he's sleeping at night this other guy he was a tonga he's like grinding his teeth you can hear the sound of the guy i'm like oh that guy is going to finish those teeth the way he's grinding those teeth 
and unfortunately look at me i lost all my teeth and the guy was grinding the teeth i believe he still have the teeth and i was like a bit shocked because now this guy he is very weak and because of now people are always laughing because when he start doing that thing it's just something that people who are not used to it who are new they are also shocked like what is happening to this guy so he had the low self-esteem and he was not talking much and he didn't want to put himself in a position whereby you know it can backfire to him so the guys you know relied on me to break off the fight and i didn't break off the fight and i'm like these two guys they always wanted to fight and i am gonna let them fight now the older guy decided to take the spade because he wanted to hit the guy with the spade i jumped and i said wait no i am not going to allow any weapons if you guys want to settle your beef you can settle with your beef with your hands physically i have no problem no one is throwing anybody in the river no one is using any weapon you guys wanted to fight i tried to break off the fight and you told me that you really wanted to sort out your problem this is the time to sort out your problem and i can tell that the other guy who was receiving the punishment he didn't want to be there i can tell in his eyes that he didn't know where he was i will continue with the video because my battery is low thank you now the guys you know fought so hard in a way that the other guy after he took the spade and he wanted to hit the other guy with it and i said no i cannot allow that to happen you know i cannot allow you guys to push each other to the river or else use any weapon to harm each other if you want to settle this thing you know you can continue to settle it you know like a man you know just go pound for pound and these guys they continued but i can tell that the guy who is muscular the guy who is taller you know he doesn't want to be there anymore you know he had enough because of now the other guy who is older is busy swinging you know the knee and i acted like i don't even you know see exactly what was going on because these two guys remember these are guys who are older than me i was the youngest under the bridge and they are terrorizing everyone and now they're in a space whereby one of them need help from me as a young one and i remember when this other guy was like saying uncle tabo do you leave this guy you know hating me so bad and i was like saying the war is not with me you are fighting with your guy because you wanted to go pound for pound and if you had enough all you have to do is to tell him that you had enough and now we will stop you know the beef or the fight between the two of you i remember the guy you know he had the pride he didn't want to say he had enough because of he had to apologize to the uh, the guy who was older than him and he lost the fight fair and square you know he kept on trying to come back to the fight but he was gone you know that hit you know neutralized him that hit you know took him off balance and all he was trying to do is to survive and try to win the fight and i remember when he swallowed his pride when he said i had enough you know the other guy said what are you saying he said no i had enough you know i had enough you know and i remember i went to the guy who is older i said no he, he he had enough he told you that he had enough now you should stop fighting guys because what we wanted you know to to you know accomplish with this fight is, is to know who is older than who and now we know who is the man between the two of you and there is no need for this fight to continue you know these are the things which are happening you know under the bridge as guys we are homeless we are dealing with so much that you know people outside might not see but we have to share this kind of stories because you might find yourself on that position one day rock bottom is for everyone you might not hear it now but you might hear it one day whereby you will be forced to fight for a loaf of bread you know and i remember after that and i told them like guys I tried very hard to stop the fight between the two of you you didn't want me to intervene and i didn't even want to be the guy who will stop the fight before these guys take out everything in there because there is one thing when once you stop the fight well people still have something you know 
in their tank, you know, they feel like they can still go for more and you stop the fight, they forever, you know, have that thing of saying, you know, I could have won the fight, you know. If, if they didn't stop the fight earlier, you know, maybe I could have swing one or two punches that can knock the other guy out, you know. Then I made sure that I let them go until they feel like, you know what, this is it. There is no way I can come back. And after that, I remember the guy who is buff, the guy who has, you know, muscles. You know, he went to the police station and he went there to report the case. And he said, you know, I've been beaten, this and that. And the police, you know, they, they just smell the spirit coming out of his mouth. And they said, no, no, we don't want to be involved into your stories, guys. Because every time you guys, you're done drinking your things or you're done smoking your things, you start fighting and you want to come and open the case. And after some couple of days, we understand that you guys are not even fighting. You're just having those kind of altercations whereby you are fighting for drugs and stuff. You know, the police wanted, didn't want to get involved into that. You know, I remember the guy for the next two days to three days, he didn't want to sleep with us. You know, he wanted to go and have a space where you will sleep alone. But the thing is, it's winter. So he started to realize that actually he doesn't have enough blanket. And he came back with this other guy who was a lawyer. I remember when this guy who is a lawyer, he was asking me a question. It was on Friday night. You know, it was packed. And he said, man, Tabo, I heard they said there was a fight here. You know, and you couldn't even help because these guys wanted to kill each other. Why did you do that? You know, he's a lawyer. He wants to know and understand. And I was like, look, these two guys are best friends and these two guys they always wanted to fight each other all the time and i tried to stop the fight three times and every time i'm trying to stop the fight between these guys they wanted to fight it's like i am putting the fuel into fire it's like i'm putting the petrol into fire you know and now uh, i stopped doing doing that i stopped trying to separate the two because of now i understood that they will turn on me if I keep on stopping them they will start beating me and now beside that you know these two guys man they were the same guys who will come and put water to our blankets they are the same guys who will come and and you know put water to our fire at night so if they had their own beef that they wanted to settle you know what I said be it and by the look of things the other guy had to apologize and it was a fair fight no one intervened to their fight i was there to make sure that they are not using harmful you know objects like weapons or spade i was there to make sure that it's a fair fight and by the way i look at things the other guy who lost the fight he even surrendered he said he had enough you know and everybody was laughing and i said and the thing about it is that he didn't even request for the rematch he understand that he lost fair and square and the good thing about that on that night, I remember even the guy who lost the fight, he was smiling, you know. He was just smiling, although you can tell that he's ashamed because he lost. And he has to take an L of saying, I lost the fight fair and square. And when this guy of a lawyer is asking him, man, is that the truth? He smiled and he said, yeah, no, that's the truth, you know. It was a fair fight. You know, no one helped him. I just lost the fight. You know, we all laughed, and after that, you know, it took them a day or two, and we saw the guys together. You know, they were smoking together, they were drinking their stuff together, <clears throat> and that was one of the good things, you know. And, and some of the things, when I look back, you know, I just smile, you know, those memories, and I'm like, was I too hard on those guys? You know, but that really helped because of after that fight, the guys never came back at night and put, you know, water to our fire. There was respect be between the two guys. And, 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 and you know, the, the, the place was peaceful again, you know. And sometimes when you are with lions, you know, you have to behave like a lion. You know, you have to, you have to be tough, man. It's hard out there. You know, I feel sorry for those guys who are homeless, who doesn't know what's going on, you know, and... Others, men, they, they end up, you know, smoking things that they don't have to smoke. Not because of they want to smoke, but because of, you know, fear of being alone outside on the street right there. 
and some of their family members they don't get them they don't understand them you know when they see them you know taking these things like nyaupe drugs and everything they don't even you know have time to sit down with those guys and wanting to understand their pain wanting to understand them you know sometimes people need you to see the problem is that we want to tell somebody what they should do that's where the problem is you you want those guys to behave and to do things the way you want things to be done and that's why there is always misunderstanding but only if people can sit down and have time whereby they listen to these guys on the street what are they saying what are they dealing with what they like to see you know what bothers them you start to understand that these guys are hurting and no one wants to be on the street no one wants to be homeless it's just the situations whereby sometimes when that guy is coming home you know people are treating him like you are a loser you can never be something in life you know lucky for me mentally i'm super tough mentally i'm that kind of a guy that you know i i just believe that as long as i'm still breathing my guy started now with sports cars i'm going to record them later you know it's saturday you know you know how they are, they are they are raging every saturday you know i'm i'm just mentally you know super tough you know cuz i like most of my time man i'm that guy who's always alone you know i'm that guy who will go to mountains rivers and caves i'm that guy who doesn't have too many friends i got brothers i got sisters outside there i see you i feel your energy i feel like you good to me you're like my brother if i feel like you good to me you're like my sister but not really friends you know i don't i don't believe in this thing of you my friend you my friend that's not my thing that's not my thing that's not how i do my things if you and i we are cool we have a good energy that's fine we can vibe that's cool you know about friends where by we keep on visiting each other talking about stuff i don't trust no bad i got stuff all over my body I don't need more. You know, I always want to make mistakes and suffer from things that I sit down and I'm like I made a mistake. I suffer because of I did this and that. It's my doing because I find out that you know 90% of problems that I was solving they were not actually my problems. There was somebody who was close to me's problem, a friend problem, a sibling problem, you know, a girlfriend problem that I'm solving in most cases and I am in pain you know I am trying very hard to find solutions and by the time I look at things people are not even bothered by the things that they are creating around me so I'm like you know what I'm going to deal with my own things and everybody will be like a brother and a sister and my brother that's your problem you have to deal with that one you need you need to make that one right that's that's how I live my life and that's it You know sometimes when I sit down and I think about those things guys it just bring a lot of memory a lot of pain a lot of laughter you know and I'm like that's me you know sometimes I need to give myself a freedom to be me you know I have to accept myself the way I am you know I don't have somebody's life and I have to be grateful for the life I have good or bad I have to find good in all these bad things there is no thing like a bad thing you can just get something from that when you get those pieces together you can create something magnificent you know that's how life it is it's just up to us you can create something beautiful with whatever bad experience you had or you can just give up just like everybody give up and they tell you that it's too hard we cannot figure it out you know guys i appreciate you guys showing me love and support and i'm going to keep on dropping you know some videos about mountains rivers and caves and sharing my experience with you guys and i appreciate